Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I've gotten a lot of requests from parents, right, regarding um, CSEC AdMats classes, right? Unfortunately, I cannot fit it into my schedule because I already teach maths, chemistry, and physics, right, form fours and fives. So what I will be doing is I will be doing some videos on topics whenever I get a chance, right? Um, so for those of you who don't know, my name is Terry David, right? And um, you probably know me from YouTube, right? Um, in terms of online classes, right? Um, I do teach online classes and that is CSEC Maths, CSEC Physics, CSEC Chemistry, both four and five, right? So anyone interested can contact me at this number, right? I am fully online and I will be permanently online, right? Um, I've been doing this for a while now, right? It's not just because of COVID, right? Um, so let's start with our first topic, right? Which is the remainder and the factor theorem, right? So <clears throat> let's recall how we perform a division. So let's say we wanted to divide something like this, 13 divided by 2, right? That will be 2 can go into 13 six, um, 2 can go into 13 6 times. So 6 to the 12. And what we end up with is a remainder of 1, right? The concept seems simple enough, right? You would have met this since primary school days, right? So we can write this as 13 is equal to right, 13 is equal to 2 multiplied by 6 plus 1, right? Now, you need to know what these terms are, right? So, this number here, my 2, is what we call our divisor. So, that's my divisor, right? And the 6, in this case here, right? It's what we call our quotient. So this here is called our Q-U-O-T-I-E-N-T, -E our quotient. And this number here is what we call our remainder, right? So just like how we would perform um, division on numbers, we can do the same thing with polynomials, right? Now, a polynomial, right, is simply an expression that looks like this. So let's say we had a polynomial f of x equal to, let's say, um, I want to use something different to e. Let me, let me give you an actual polynomial, right? Let's say 3x squared plus uh, 5x plus 2, right? In this case, this is a quadratic, right? Um, we can have higher order polynomials. For example, we can have something like x cubed plus 2x squared plus x plus 1, right? These are just ones that I made up here, right? Now, here's what the remainder theorem is saying, right? If we have a function f of x and it is divided by x minus e, right? Then the, and the quotient is r, um, q and the remainder is r, then we can see that f of x is equal to q multiplied by x minus, um, that's not, this is a mistake here. This is, it should be a, right? Then f of x is equal to q multiplied by x minus a plus r, right? Similarly, like how we wrote this just now here, right? So in this case here, my um, divisor, which is the number you're dividing by, right, is the x minus a, q is the quotient, and r is my remainder. Now what the remainder theorem is basically saying is that if, this is the general thing that you need to know here, if a polynomial f of x is divided by px plus q, then the remainder is f of this, right? Now I know all of this might seem a little complicated and might seem like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Right now, this is going to make sense when we look at an example. Right, so take for example, we have this here 
you want to find your remainder when 2x cubed plus, f plus 5x squared minus 2x minus 3 is divided by x plus 1, right? So the first thing, there are two ways we can work this question. So 1 is like this. Let f of x equal to my polynomial, right? Which in this case is 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 2x minus 3, right? That's my polynomial. Now, if I want to get, the question wants to know the remainder when it's divided by x plus 1, right? So I'm going to do it this way first. So my divisor in this case here is x plus 1. But according to the remainder theorem, if I want to get the remainder, what I really need to find, I really need to find f of minus 1, right? That's what I need to work out. If I work that out, that will give me my remainder, right? Now, how did I get x minus 1? All you need to do, you see this x plus 1 here? Just do this. Some students, they don't fully understand this. And this will give me minus 1, right? So that's what I'm doing. I'm taking minus 1 and I'm going to plug it into the function, right? So what we're going to work out here, we're going to work out f of minus 1. Now, all we have to do is substitute minus 1 into this expression, right? So it's going to be 2 by minus 1 cubed plus 5 by minus 1 squared minus 2 by minus 1 minus 3, right? That's what we're working out here, right? So minus 1 cubed gives me minus 1, minus 1 by 2 gives me minus 2, and minus 1 squared gives me 1, multiply by 5 will give me 5, and then this case here is minus 2 by minus 1 will give me plus 2, and then we have minus 3 left here, right? So therefore, this final answer is going to give me 2 as my final answer. That will be my remainder, right? Now, that's one way of working this question. Um, if you are given a question like this in your CSEC exam, that is what you need to do, and that will suffice, right? But there is a next way we can do this. We can work this out using long division, right? So long division is a technique that you need to be familiar with. So what we're going to do, we're going to put this here. 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 2x minus 3. And we're going to divide that by x plus 1, right? So that's how we're going to do the long division. So the first thing we need to do, we need to say x plus 1, right, needs to go into this 2x cubed here. So I need to put 2x squared here because 2x squared multiplied. So you're going to get 2x squared here. Then I need to take that and multiply by this, right? So 2x squared by x plus 1 will give me 2x cubed, right? And then 2x squared by 1 gives me plus 2x squared. Don't worry, when you do a few, it'll start to make sense. Then we need to subtract, just like how we do long division, right? So 5x squared minus plus 2x squared gives me 3x squared, right? 2x cubed minus 2x cubed gives me 0. I don't need to write only 0. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to bring down this here, right? And what we're going to end up with is minus 2x, right? So now we have to ask ourselves, what should I put on top here, right? I need to put plus 3x, right? Because when I multiply 3x by x, I'm going to get 3x squared. So the next thing I need to do now, I need to take that and multiply by this again. So that will give me um, 3x squared plus 3x, right? And just like with long division, we have to subtract. So minus 2x minus plus 3x will give me minus 5x, right? And my next step I need to do is to bring this down here, right? So when I bring only minus 3, the minus 3 will be here. Now I need to decide what's gonna, what I'm going to put on top here. So this has to be minus 5, right? And then we need to take that now, that minus 5, and multiply by this again, right? So minus 5 by x plus 1 will give me minus 5x, right? And minus 5 by plus 1 will give me minus 5. Now, what we need to do, we're going to subtract again, right? So minus 3 minus minus 5 
right? It's the same as saying minus three plus five, which gives me two, and then minus five, minus minus five, right, will give me zero. So in this case here, I've gotten the same answer. This here is my remainder, right? This is my remainder. All right, now, so these are two ways of working the same question, right? This here, this method here is the shorter method, right? Unless they specifically ask you to do a long division, then you do it, right? But you can just substitute the minus one and you'll get the remainder, right? This is an alternative way of working out that same question, right?